their understanding and application of the passage of Scripture is where they differed. Because this man was one who was viewing it from the context of questioning, well, who is my neighbor? He thought of it from a very legalistic standpoint, trying to turn relationships into law-keeping. He was one who was trying to look at it and say, well, how can I use the Word of God, still live according to it, but not have to love certain people? But Jesus was staying from a standpoint of saying, this is how you ought to love people. You see, this parable that Jesus is going to make known, he's going to make known, this is the kind of love that you should have for other people. That this is the kind of love you should have for God. And so one of the things that we see here is, this is not a parable really emphasizing your works towards people, but it's really a parable that really emphasizes a heart that is changed. A heart that truly understands love. Because it's because of love that we're saved. And, in, and because of our expressions of love to other people, we show that God has truly changed our lives. That we demonstrate that grace has invaded our lives. And so this man asks the question, and who is my neighbor? Because according to the Jews, they had their different interpretations. It was a common one where the Jews would have an interpretation that my neighbor are the, the faithful Jews, or only Jews. Not Gentiles, not the tax collectors and prostitutes, but only these certain people. Those are my neighbors. They always try to limit love. But Jesus is going to make known, you know what? You need to love like God loves. And that's without boundaries in that regard. In the sense that there's no extent that you're willing to share love with everybody. And if you show that kind of love, that is where, where you're going to inherit eternal life. Where you love God so much because he first loved you. You're willing to love other people because that's exactly what Jesus did for you on the cross. I mean, that's, that's where we see this changed life. And so Jesus is going to tell this parable and he's going to explain to them how to really be saved. Remember, it's not just a parable about serving and doing good works. It's actually in relation to the question... What must I do to inherit eternal life? So let's read Luke chapter 10, verse 30 through 32. It says, In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. And so too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. And so now Jesus is using a parable and he's using a very realistic ex example. He's saying, okay, a man, this Jewish guy is walking from uh, Jerusalem to Jericho, which was a very common road, a 17-mile road. But just like how he mentioned how he got beaten up, the road was very full of uh, terrain. And so it would be easy for people who were looking to waylay people to hide and then go upon travelers and beat them up and steal their things. That was pretty common. And so Jesus was using a very common example. But then he uses two examples of religious elite. People who this, this teacher of the law would think would be his neighbors. These are the kind of people I spend time with. You know, that kind of mentality. And the first one that he mentions is this priest. And when he sees the man, he goes by around the other side. Now, a priest was a teacher of the law. He was the one who was educating the people about God's law. And so if anyone would have known about what God expects or Bible knowledge, or it would have been this priest. I mean, he was the one whose job was to help bring people in the right relation with God. He would, he would help people in their worship, in their sacrifices, in their knowledge of God. But how did he respond? He went by on the other side. But then we see this Levite. We see this Levite, and he sees the man, and he does the same thing. Now, Levite was a man who came from the tribe of Levi. And Levi was a special tribe because they were set apart for God's own possession. And, and the Levites were the temple assistants to the priests. They were the ones who ran the day-to-day -day operations at the temple. They knew about serving God. But what did this man do? This man who was supposed to be dedicated to serving God, what did he do? He went by on the other way. But here's the thing about this. 
And we miss this in, in, in the translation. It gets lost in translation. But this concept about them going uh, past him, in the original language, we really get the idea that they not only went past him, but they would see the man and they decided to take a whole new route. They really inconvenienced themselves by finding a new route so that they could just totally avoid the man. I mean, have you ever done that in your life where a need comes up and then instead of seeing, instead of helping the person with the need, you're like, hey, quick, quick, give, tell me to do something so I have an excuse not to help that person. Yeah, I, I hear a few chuckles, see a few smiles. You know that's true. But that's exactly what they did. They not only just ignored the problem, but they inconvenienced themselves not to solve the problem. I mean, that's a hard and difficult thing. But look at this idea of eternal life. I mean, we, we really get the sense that this guy, the one guy, if one guy could really claim salvation and what should he do right based on Bible knowledge and worship, it would have been the priest, right? It would have been him. Or if it was one based completely on our own works or our own service and so forth, the Levi would have had it, you know? He, he's in the temple every day helping people, doing the things of God. But they didn't have the right heart. They may have done the right things, but they didn't have the right heart and they didn't have the right understanding. And that's, and, and that's something that Jesus has expressed over and over again. That you may do the right things, but unless your heart is right, it doesn't matter. I mean, that's one of the main things that Paul is making known in 1 Corinthians 13. He says, you know what, you can have faith to move mountains. You can understand scripture. You can give your everything to the poor. You can sacrifice your body to the flames as a martyr. You can do all that stuff. But let me tell you this. If you don't have love in your life, guess what? None of that matters. You see, these guys did all, a lot of the right things, but they didn't have the right heart and they didn't understand love. And if you don't understand love, how can you possibly understand and know God? Because that's one of the things that Willie read. God is love. I mean, he's so full of it that, that when you think about God, you think of that he's, he's just love. That's, that's the best description you could give of him. He's so perfect in it, mature in it, complete in it. He can't improve anymore. I mean, that's the kind of heart that we should have. That that's, that's the kind of love that really brought about our salvation. That, and it's that one that really helps us be complete in our love for other people when we serve other people. And remember that Matthew 25. We know we're not saved by works, but our love for God is seen by how we serve other people. One of the amazing things that we learn about Jesus theologically is that when people mention the great commandment about loving God, he would always include the second one and he never separated them. Because here's the idea. You can't truly love God if you don't love other people. It's impossible. But here's the thing. If you truly want to love people the way that God intended you to love, then that's going to help you learn to love God more. That's why it has this symbiotic relationship with one another. That's why it is so powerful. This is why loving each other actually makes a difference. And that's why it shows that we are his disciples if we love one another. And then that's why we see we're supposed to serve one another. Now, as, as Christians, sometimes we... We take all this and we have to ask, do we have the heart that loves? Or are we really like the priest and the Levite? I mean, they, they went to religious assembly. They did a lot of good things. But did they have the right heart? And do you have the right heart? What happens when needs arise in the church? What, what's your natural inclination? Is it to serve or to make an excuse? Is your love for God one that says, you know what? Because I understand what God has done for me, I just want to do what God has done and help people see the love of God and grace. And when people see me, they see the light of Christ. They see the salt of the earth. And that's the thing about grace. When it's captured, you can't capture it and hold on to it. It has to overflow. I mean, that's the amazing thing. And so some people, this priest could, or could and this Levite, if it was based on our own works, if it was only based on, on Bible knowledge, they would have been able to be saved. But the concept here is that that wasn't good enough. The acts weren't good enough. The heart is what really makes...